This is Oldham as it is today. But how much do you think you know about the town? During the past few weeks, we've asked people who live and work in Oldham to give us questions that will hopefully set your grey matter working for the next 30 or so minutes. So let's make a start with the first question, and who better to ask it than the mayor of the town, Councillor Joseph Farquhar. Behind me, we have the case which preserves the silver drums, silver bugles, and the regimental colours of the 10th Battalion, the Manchester Regiment. The silver drums and bugles were paid for by public subscription as a memorial to those of the battalion who'd lost their lives in the First World War. We're very proud to have them here in our safekeeping. As well as the silver drums, bugles and colours, within this case we have medals. The most prized of which are those of the late Sergeant John Hogan of the 2nd Battalion, the Manchester Regiment. And it includes his Victoria Cross, which was presented for gallantry in the First World War. Of course, we don't just have military treasures. We have our own civic treasures. And here you see in this cabinet the mace of the borough. The mace stands before the council during all council sessions. It's a symbol of justice and is carried before the mayor on processions such as at the Churching of the Mayor or Remembrance Sunday. In front of the mace there's an interesting exhibit which is the key for the building which was used by the, Her Majesty the Queen Mother to open the building in 1979. The door was locked so that she may open it and during this operation the key broke. So, in typical British fashion, we retain the broken key, which will forever remain broken. Our question is, who was the first mayor of the Metropolitan Borough of Oldham? Who was the first mayor of the Metropolitan Borough of Oldham? From the administrative centre of Oldham, let's now travel across the road to Tommyfield Market and the new market hall for a question. There's 216 open stalls, 33 perimeter stalls, 28 brick units, and six kiosks and 252 units in the market hall. Our question is, what year did the old market hall burn down? What year did the old market hall burn down? Maintaining the shopping theme, we now travel to the Spindles and join the management team and ask how successful is the shopping centre? The Spindles shopping centre opened on the 2nd of September 1993. Now two years on, the centre is 95% let with more than 50 shops. The spindle stained glass roof was designed by local born artist Brian Clark. It is one of the largest in Europe. Our question is, the central square atrium depicts the life and times of another of Oldham's famous sons. Who is that person? The central square atrium depicts the life and times of another of Oldham's famous sons. Who is that person? There are many organisations that utilise the spindles for fundraising activities. The Royal British Legion being one of them. We join them for their question. Our question is, which is the longest street in Oldham? Which is the longest street in Oldham? Let's try some shorter questions and see how observant you are. Whilst you're uptown shopping, where would you find our fishy friend? Where would you find our fishy friend? On what food emporium would you find these elephants? On what food emporium would you find these elephants? What's the name of this thoroughfare? What's the name of this thoroughfare? Where would you find this lamp? Where would you find this lamp? Where would you be visiting if you passed under this sign? Where would you be visiting if you passed under this sign? In times gone by, what famous store used to stand where the new shops are on the left of the street? What famous store used to stand where the new shops are on the left of the street? Still on the subject of old shops, let's now join Peter Fox at Oldham Museum. Certainly shopping over the past 30 years has changed quite drastically. You certainly won't find a cloggers anymore that will repair your clogs. And you certainly won't find a doll's hospital. And certainly in our chemists, uh, some of the patent medicines, I'm sure, would make people pull and wince. There's an old pub, and one of the unusual features that is permanent as well is the devil's fireplace. Well, here we are. 
we're in front of the devil's fireplace and a gruesome structure it is. Certainly a night sat in front of a few pints in front of this and having to go home after that you'd scurry home with fear. In actual fact it was made to represent what was a popular saying at the time. The lawyer pleads for all, the parson prays for all, the devil takes all. Fortunately times are a bit happier now. But in actual fact it used to stand in a pub in Oldham. Now, the pub has long since been demolished, certainly the original building, but a pub of the same name still stands on the same site. So where did the Devil's Fireplace used to be? Where did the Devil's Fireplace used to be? In 1849, the Oldham Borough Police Force was established and consisted of a superintendent, Mr John Jackson, one sergeant and ten constables. Today, Q Division, as it's now known, covers an area of some 54 square miles, of which two-thirds make up open moorland, the rest being densely populated residential and industrial areas. This makes for a wide range of demands on the force, who have to balance the need for the bobby on the beat with the instant response that people require when in difficulties. To help achieve this, the police have many specialist sections. For example, most people see police motorcycles patrolling the streets. But did you know they have off-road patrols that last year made over 600 arrests? And police dog patrols for those moments when you need a little extra help. So let's get their question. Originally we were housed in the old town hall. But when was the new police station opened? Was it in 1966, 1968 or 1970? That's our question. When was the new police station opened? Was it in 1966, 1968 or 1970? Along with the police in Oldham, the other emergency services are also well represented. So let's see what you know about the fire service. Where was the Old Town Centre fire station situated? Where was the Old Town Centre fire station situated? Now to the ambulance service and the hospital for their questions. Greater Manchester Ambulance Service Trust is split into two sections, Accident and Emergency Service and the Patient Transport Service. In the Oldham area, we move on average of 70,000 patients on the Accident and Emergency Service in any one year. Did you also know that each year in the Oldham area, the Patient Transport Service moves in excess of 60,000 non-emergency patients? Unfortunately, they didn't have time to ask the question, so we'll ask it for them. When did Greater Manchester Ambulance Service become a trust? When did Greater Manchester Ambulance Service become a trust? Next stop, the Royal Oldham Hospital, as we join them in the new reception area. Our question is, when was the first test tube baby born in this hospital? When was the first test tube baby born in this hospital? Some emergency services, however, are not as well known as the others, but are just as important. The Oldham Mountain Rescue Team has, for the past 30 years, provided a voluntary search and rescue service in Oldham. Working with the other emergency services, it conducts intensive searches in wild moorland or open countryside, and can even evacuate injured casualties from difficult locations. Our question is, which was Britain's first national park? Which was Britain's first national park? There are many worthy voluntary bodies in and around Oldham who give training and a sense of purpose to young people. The ATC in Royton is one such organisation. Members are given the chance to try many different activities, such as motorcycle riding, abseiling and even flying. Our question is, what year did the ATC let girls join? What year were girls allowed into the ATC? Let's now join Oldham Sea Cadets on a typical night's activities. The cadets are taught basic skills that would be required should they wish to join the Navy. They're taught drill and how to use radio communications equipment and even how to repair and service marine engines. So what's the question? My other question is, where in this town would you find Oldham Sea Cadets? Where in this town would you find Oldham Sea Cadets? The next question comes from the Territorial Army Engineers, who are based at Rifle Street. The soldiers don't just learn skills that would enable them to survive in times of conflict, but also skills that can easily be transferred into everyday life. For example, heavy goods vehicle driving, electrical and engineering skills. 
old question is, what sort of vehicle was based here at Rifle Street before the workshops took over? What sort of vehicle was based here at Rifle Street before the workshops took over? Have you ever wondered who actually runs your bus driver to work? We joined GM Buses North, based at Mumps at 6 o'clock one morning, to find the drivers taking buses onto the road ready for rush hour. Our question is, what year did the last tram run in Oldham? What year did the last tram run in Oldham? Keeping in the Mumps area, we next visited Mumps Station for their question. Our question is, there used to be four stations in Oldham. We're here at Oldham Mumps. It's further down the line as Oldham Werneth. What's the name of the other two? There used to be four stations in Oldham. We're here at Oldham Mumps. It's further down the line as Oldham Werneth. What's the name of the other two? Let's now widen the area for the questions and look to the other areas that make up Oldham. First, let's travel to Shaw. We all know where the War Memorial is in Shaw, but can you tell us where the South African War Memorial is situated? Can you tell us where the South African War Memorial is situated? Next, Failsworth. More or less everybody knows Failsworth Pole as a landmark. But our question is, what was it originally used for? What was it originally used for? Next stop, Daisy Nook Country Park for a question. This morning I was doing some work with Stansfield Road Infant and Nursery School and their topic at school was autumn colours and changes and the seeds of trees and we ended up with a question about beautiful trees in our woodland classroom area. What are these trees? This lady is Marjorie Lees whose family were wealthy benefactors in Oldham. This lady left a park to the people of Oldham. Which park was this? Which park was this? Next stop, Saddleworth Museum for their question. The museum has many fine exhibits, from working weaving and spinning machinery, through to exhibits of local interest for young and old alike. During the past few years, the museum has introduced many new schemes that make each visit different than the last. For example, recently they've introduced family activity boxes, which include question cards and items whose answers can be found amongst the exhibits. Our question is, are you sharp enough to get this? Are you sharp enough to get this? Over the hill now to Delft, and one of the venues for the famous Whit Friday Brass Band competitions, and the home of Delft Brass Band. And our question is, what's the maximum number of players that play at a brass band competition? What's the maximum number of players that play at a brass band competition? In the distant past, this house used to be a pub and had a customer who later became Prime Minister. Who was that man? Who was that man? How many people realise that Oldham has a ski club that meets on a regular basis? It's a great slope. It's dead easy. It's fantastic for learning. Um, it's dead easy, progression is very quick and if you've done a bit of skiing in the past then it's great just to keep up with your technique. Our question is, how old is our ski slope? How old is our ski slope? Next stop, Watersheddings, the home of Oldham Rugby. Now, we haven't had the best of luck this year in as much that we've been overcome with injuries right from the start. But they've gone out and they've played with pride and credit. Unfortunately, the results haven't gone for us and that reflects on the position we are in the table. Our question is, who is the youngest player in our Hall of Fame? Who is the youngest player in our Hall of Fame? Over now to Boundary Park, home of the Latics. Our question is, 
What was the club known as before it was known as Oldham Athletic? What was the club known as before it was known as Oldham Athletic? It's not only football and rugby that's represented on the sports front. We joined the Oldham Owls on a practice session for their question. It's a club where we like able-bodied people to join in with us, otherwise we wouldn't integrate the disabled into society. And we also want people just for the fun of it, um, get enjoyment from sport and recreation and those who are very serious and want to play and, and progress to international standard athletes. And at this moment in time we've got people in, in all categories and they do enjoy coming no matter what. I mean, we, can, we try to accommodate them and at the moment we are doing. Our question is, which is the only club in Oldham to have won a European Championship? Which is the only club in Oldham to have won a European Championship? Next, to the new sixth form college to meet the principal for his views on what he wants the students from the college to achieve. If you were to put in a sort of fairly pithy sentence what we're about here in terms of curriculum, when our students go away to be interviewed, our aim is to have them sitting next to students from places like Eton, Harrow, prestigious public schools, and for our students to wipe the floor with those others. We want our students to go away from here better prepared so they get the very best. Students coming into the college now get a choice from well over a hundred different short courses, including things like pre-teaching and introduction to Claris Works on the Apple Macintosh computer, and modern language uh, related courses, and those complement their Exam the, their chosen examination courses and at the end of uh, their first year here they'll get a certificate from the University of Liverpool which demonstrates that they have got a genuinely broad and balanced programme of education and, and that I think is a unique achievement of the college and something which enables our students to achieve uh, Nick's ambition in terms of uh, other institutions nationally. Our question is, excluding John and myself, which is the only old part of Oldham Sixth Form College? which is the only old part of Oldham Sixth Form College. Next, Oldham College. The college has a fine reputation for non-vocational and vocational training courses and is well equipped to give students all the necessary experience to complete their studies. For example, there's the Barn Owl Training Restaurant where students gain valuable experience in dealing with the public. There's well equipped hair and beauty salons and even courses on aromatherapy and massage. Two years ago, we were a hundred years old, so our question is, where was the first site of Oldham College? Where was the first site of Oldham College? What building lives behind these gates? What building lives behind these gates? Oldham has had a long tradition with the music hall and theatre, and in its heyday boasted six in total. The Colosseum has been around since 1887, and we asked how has the theatre changed over the past few years? Well, since around about 1887, the theatre's carried out a wide range of theatrical activity. Uh, variety, circus, music hall, uh, drama, and in recent years, musicals and repertory theatres. Perhaps most interestingly, we've had some very illustrious performers. Uh, Buffalo Bill, for example, that uh, we probably see on the cinema films, actually performed in this theatre as a live act. I don't think any of us are around who actually saw it, but it's certainly in the annals of the history of the Coliseum. And my question is this. In 1908, a young 19-year-old performer in Casey's Court Circus, who later became an actor, a director, and international star, played in this theater. What is his name? What is his name? The Coliseum was not the only theater in the town. The Grand Theatre opened on Christmas Eve 1908 with a performance of Aladdin. It's had many uses during the years, from dance halls to a bowling alley. But amongst its many visiting performers were the Beatles. In what year did the Beatles perform at the theatre? In what year did the Beatles perform at the theatre? Finally, through the years, the town's main source of news has been the Oldham Evening Chronicle. We asked Philip Hurst, the editor, What's the role of the newspaper? All newspapers are made up of three things, information, entertainment and opinion. At the Chronicle we believe in uh, keeping comment where it belongs in the comment column, uh, entertaining a little and giving an awful lot of information. If the Chronicle had a, a motto it would be, I think, uh, knowledge is power because when you give people information 
you give them a chance to affect their own lives. And of course the Chronicle is a meeting place as well, it's where the police uh, get in contact with the public, the council with its council taxpayers, and of course where readers get in contact with other readers and advertisers and customers. The paper uh, starts to be printed at about 20 past one, uh, but of course as soon as we finish one newspaper in the editorial department we start on the next one. So. Uh, from about half past one on the, the day the paper is printed, we're starting doing the, the Oldham Chronicle for the next day. And it's a never ending uh, treadmill like that. Finding the news, putting it in, and away goes the paper. Well, here I've got a copy of the first edition of the Oldham Chronicle. And my question is, in what year was the Chronicle first published? Was it in 1838, 1854, or 1880? In what year was the Chronicle first published? Was it in 1838? 1854 or 1880. So how did you do? Pause the tape now if you wish to change papers and the answers will follow shortly. The answers. Question 1. The first mayor of the Metropolitan Borough of Oldham was Ellen Brierley. The market hall burned down on Friday the 5th of October 1974. The stained glass depicts the life and times of Sir William Walton. The longest street in Oldham is Frederick Street. Our fishy friend is found outside the Spindle shopping centre by the main entrance. The elephants can be found on the Burger King building. The answer is Church Lane. The lamp can be found at the bottom of the Hilton Arcade you'd be visiting the Greaves Hotel. The store was Woolworth's. The Devil's Fireplace was fitted in the Abbey Inn, West Street. The police station was opened in 1968. Ashcroft Street. The Greater Manchester Ambulance Service became a trust in 1994. The first test tube baby was born in 1977. The first national park was the Peak District National Park. Girls were first allowed in the ATC in 1980. The Sea Cadets can be found at the Durka Annex, Durka Street. The vehicles that were based at Rifle Street were tanks. The last tram ran in 1946. The two other stations in Oldham were Clegg Street and Oldham Central. The South African War Memorial can be found in the park behind the new library. Failsworth Pole was originally used as a maypole. The trees in Daisy Nook were beech trees. The park that Marjorie Lees gave to the people of Oldham was Werneth Park. This device was a knife cleaner, but you can have a point if you put knife sharpener. There are a maximum of 25 brass players and three percussionists allowed to play in a brass band competition. The answer is Winston Churchill, who used to be an MP in Oldham. The ski slope is 24 years old. The youngest player in Oldham's Rugby Hall of Fame is Andy Goodway. Latics were known as Pine Villa. The only club to win a European Championship is the Oldham Owls basketball team. The only old part of the new college is the entrance archway. It was the original entrance to Oldham Royal Infirmary. The original site of the college was the Lyceum Building's Union Street. It's the Magistrates Court that lives behind these gates. The answer was Charlie Chaplin. The Beatles played at the Astoria, as it was called then, on the 12th of February 1963. Saturday, May the 6th, 1854. Well, in the immortal words of Bugs Bonnie, that's all for now, folks. But more importantly, we hope you enjoyed the programme. And you never know, we might just see you again in a question of Oldham 2.